What's up guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review season 15 episode 2 of Real Housewives of New York. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. So when this episode opened up, I actually was surprised because I thought it was going to be a continuation of, of the first episode where they had the argument with Sai and Bryn and, you know, Bryn got upset and left her own party. And then we see Uba and all the girls are excited to see Uba. So I was just kind of like, well... We just gonna leave it there like she she legit left her own party and didn't come back and i guess so so the episode actually opens up with aaron and her mom they're at this wig shop and we know unfortunately her mom is dealing with cancer and i hope that she's in remission now because i did see that aaron you know unfortunately lost her dad i think maybe like either this month or the month prior and i think it would totally suck and be traumatic to lose your dad and then lose your mom that's a lot to handle that is a lot to handle in one like in yeah that's just a lot that is a lot so she's at the wig shop we find out that she also cut her hair short and in her confessional she's wearing a wig and she lets it be known that like she's her mom's only child that the siblings that we saw last season are her half siblings so she's just like you know I want my mom to know that I'm here for her she says that their relationship is very very close so she's just like as as long as I'm here I'm gonna let my, my mom know like I'm her biggest champion so they're at the wig shop we then see Uba pull up. We find out Uba was the first person that Aaron told that her mom had cancer. She also explains that, like, that's her girl. Uba is her girl. Uba says in her confessional that she feels like Aaron told her because she knows that she can trust her. And we also know last season we found out that Uba, it had been some years since she had lost her mom and she was really struggling with that because her mom was the matriarch of the family. So while her mom is putting on wigs, I just want to say one thing. I... I didn't like any wig that they put on her mom. And for me, for someone like as me, as a person that has worn wigs from time to time, and I was really in my wig era back in like 2020, 2021, <laughs> I got in there deep. I was just kind of like, why did y'all pick wigs so thick? Like, I need y'all to lessen the densities in this wig. And the place that they went to, I can guarantee, was probably a human hair um, boutique, which is cool. Synthetic's cool as well if you know how to take care of them. Girls, a lot of girls on YouTube who will show you that they can make a synthetic wig look better than a human hair wig. So no hate on both sides, but it's just kind of like her wig was too thick. I was like, the density of the wig is too thick. The hairline is too small. Like y'all need to pluck it a little bit more, open it up. And on top of that, I was like, the hairline doesn't look natural. And it seems like her mom was going for a natural vibe. Now the color, I think the color looked really nice on her mom. It was like um, brown roots that faded into blonde. And I think that was the closest to her mom's hair. So I'm just like, you picked a good, like a good wig that had a good color, but like the construction of the wig was a no ma'am. It's just, it was a no ma'am. So as the mom is trying on wigs, we actually see Uba and Aaron have a conversation where Uba is asking Aaron, so how are you? Like, what about what happened last night? And Aaron ends up being like, you know what? I'm just over Bryn right now. It's kind of giving me flashbacks to the whole cheese plate situation last year. And yeah, it did seem like last year that whole cheese plate situation was blown totally out of proportion where Bryn told Cy how Aaron was upset about the way that side talked about her cheese plate and now here we are about like did Aaron call Jenna poor and so Aaron is just kind of like I just hate that she did that because now me and Jenna are kind of in a weird spot and she was like I think we're okay but then again I don't know and so Uba was like didn't Jenna kind of stop talking to you for a while and she was like yeah she did stop talking to me for a while so I'm just like what like you know why would you do that Bryn and she and Aaron ends up feeling like she feels like she did that because of the whole Jeff Lewis situation and it's just pissing her off because she's just like right now I need my friends my mom's dealing with cancer then I wish I could lean up on my husband but me and him not in a good place right now because he did something that really pissed me off she then starts crying to Uba about what 
Abe did. But like Uba said in her confessional, if you don't explain to me what's happening, how can I help you? But Uba starts to get emotional seeing her cry. And right now, Aaron is just like irritated with Bryn and also super irritated with her husband. We don't know what he did. And honestly, at the beginning of the episode, I was like, okay, so he cheated. Is that why we're mad? Is that why we're emotional? Because she ends up saying that, like, Abe did something where, you know, I'm already dealing with stress and he just compounded it. I'm like, so did you find out it's an outside baby? Like, girl, tell me what's up. Stop beating around the bush. Just tell the truth. So the next thing we get is this sit down with Jenna and Sai, where Sai is, like, apologizing to Jenna for her behavior the night prior where she went off on Bryn. Basically telling Jenna, like... I don't want to be known as this like angry person that can't control their emotions or who's lashing out for no reason. She was like, Bryn just really set me off, especially telling you that I can't, like, I hate you. That's not like what it, what I meant by that. She was just like, we weren't a size, like we weren't in a good place. And then I kind of judged you because I felt like you weren't being authentic, but I don't hate you. And so Jenna is like, well, girl, Bryn's not the only person that told me you were talking bad about me. So just don't hold her feet to the fire. And I'm kind of just like, well, Sai, what else have you said, girl? <laughs> what else have you said? So then Sai is like, well, my thing is, Bryn shouldn't have told you anyway, because that was a conversation between us. So I think Sai's reasoning is like, yeah, I said what I said about you, Jenna, but at the end of the day, me and her were friends and we were having a private conversation. She shouldn't have ran back and told you what I said. But then I'm just kind of like, Sai, what did you expect? Because Bryn is petty. Bryn has shown us since last season when her feelings get hurt she gets petty so I'm just kind of like what did you expect like you should have been prepared for something like this to happen and so Jenna ends up saying like I understand Sai like you had a pretty rough childhood you've always had to be defensive and like defend yourself so like aggressively that it's hard for you to be vulnerable because being defensive is like your safe space low-key a read and then Sai is like no like I feel like I am being vulnerable by telling you how I'm feeling and why I'm hurt by what happened and so Jenna was like you guys just need to have a conversation and Sai is like I've been reaching out trying to have a conversation with her but she won't she won't budge and she said I messaged the group so we find out that Sai apologized to the group in a in a group chat and then she messaged Bryn on the side privately and the text message reads She says, hey, Bryn, I wanted to reach out and apologize for how things escalated last night. Please know that it was never my intention to ruin your party or upset you in any way. I was under the impression that we had a great friendship last year, but numerous situations have transpired that left me questioning our friendship. And to be honest, I'm just simply hurt. I really would like the opportunity to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss what's been, been going on. Please let me know if you're open to having a coffee with me and Bryn never responded but she had her read receipts on so we know Bryn read the message so then size and her confessional being like leaving a girl on read or on read receipts lets you know that they don't really be messing with you and she said I, I see where I stand with Bryn and so the conversation continues where with Jenna telling Sai, you're going to have to meet Bryn with softness and kindness. The same way I'm meeting you with softness and kindness. And Sai is like, why do I have to do that when she keep playing in my face? <laughs> you know, I'm reaching out. I'm trying to give her the opportunity uh, to, for us to move forward. And she keep giving me basically her you know what to kiss. And so then Sai gets frustrated where she's like, I'm tired of me being the only one seen as like I'm the one that has a like anger anger issue when whenever you make Bryn mad she threatens you and then we all kind of brush it away being like oh that's just Bryn that's just how Bryn rolls like I'm not the one that texted in the group that I'm carbon monoxide and so Jenna says in her confessional like arguing in text doesn't it's not my style but I get where Sai is coming from if I'm going to be chastised for my behavior of me lashing out and yelling at people and stuff like that then we need to correct the behavior of you threatening me in emails and 
sending text messages. So they um, show Bryn's text where she tells the group that she's carbon monoxide, where she says, I don't scream or yell. I won't bash you in the press. No, no, not my style. I'm far, far too elegant and smart for that. Some, um, she says, someone who tried to F with me once called me carbon monoxide, invisible, odorless, and sucks the very life out of you before you even have a chance to realize it. And I'm looking at Bryn like, girl, you thought that was cute, but it's, it, no one's scared of you. You're the same one that told Uba that you put people in the funeral home. Like, she, I think she was like, you may put people in the hospital, but I put people in the funeral home. Girl, no one's afraid of you when people come confront you and you leave your own party crying. Why not argue back? And, and Brenda need, does need to chill out with like threatening people because girl she would have been mad at me because I would have like <laughs> I would have like you know if you have a um an iPhone I would have put a haha emoji on top of that or I would have hearted it and said good or I would have put a meme in there with like okay girl I see you let us know how you roll because what you're not about to do is threaten me like from text it's just it's not gonna go down and, and I feel threatened by you but it seems like Sai and Jenna are going to move forward. We then see this scene of Raquel with her family. She has two kids from a previous marriage, a daughter named Ellie. And I think I didn't get her son's name, but I think he's 17 years old. I thought the um, confessional that her and her fiance did together, Mel, was actually cute. They kind of look like yin and yang to me because Raquel got on black, Mel got on white. I want to know more about their relationship because Raquel made a comment last episode where she was like, not a lot of people were happy when we got together. What's T? Like, is it messy? Because I want to know that tea. I want to know that tea. So we find out that Raquel, I think, is a forensic, forensic, like, neuro, neurologist or forensic neurologist engineer. I've never heard of that. I was just like, girl, what is that? What, what, what is, like, I wish they would have put a definition on the screen, but Mel has, like, uh, an obsession with this one dog in their house named Pablo. I, you know... She was like, he has anxiety. I said, girl, no, he don't. He's a dog. He may have anxiety. If you don't give that dog some trazodone and tell him to calm down. <laughs> like, and then they were going over like the bill that they have for the dog. Like he gets sunscreen, which is good for animals. So I'm not even going to fault that. The doggy cologne being $150 when, girl, if you don't go get like some nice baby wipes or some doggy cologne that's like maybe 15 bucks from your local pet store. Then they say the dogs get massages. We actually see Mel like cooking steak to put in there. I said, girl, that might be why he looks the way he does. Because then uh, Raquel makes a comment about him being fat. And I say, he is kind of pudgy, girl. I know you love him the way you do, Mel, but feeding him steak, you know how bad steak goes through our colons? You think him eating steak with his dog food is going to do anything other than make him constipated, may even give him in sepsis? Girl, <laughs> go on somewhere, Mel. Go on somewhere. So the next thing we have is Bryn and Aaron having a conversation and Bryn has an attitude off rip. She gives her tap water, which I mean, that wouldn't have been a big deal to me because I don't like it. Um, is it Avon? That water is, has always left an aftertaste for me. But she switched from bottled water to tap water to give to Aaron because Aaron has to walk up the five flights of stairs to get to Bryn's house because the elevator is broken. I said, girl, does it even have an elevator? Because Bryn's apartment looks old on the outside. Like the hallway gives old. And that's not like a bad thing, but it's giving very much like old vibes. Okay. So... Um, Bryn leaves her door cracked. She doesn't even welcome Aaron into her apartment. She sits at the sofa and Aaron comes in saying hello and she doesn't even get up to greet her. That off rip would have gave, like I would have had an attitude because I'd have been like, girl, don't invite me over to your house to disrespect me because legit I could just leave. I could leave. So they sit down and before Aaron could even like get situated on the couch, um, Brynn is like, oh, new haircut. You going through something? And I'm like, oh, you, I don't think you should. I don't, 
I don't know if Bryn just said that to be flippant. No, I know she said it to be flippant, but I don't think she meant it in a malicious way as in like to make fun of what Aaron's mom is going through. It's just like, you can kind of tell that Bryn sometimes be in her own world. But I was just like, girl, no, <laughs> that was that was the wrong choice of words. So they sit down and Aaron apologizes, but it was kind of like a half-ass apology where she was like, she doesn't even remember what she said to Bryn the night before. And Bryn's like, oh, really? You don't remember what you said to me? And Aaron's like, yeah, I got a lot going on and I don't remember. So Bryn is just like, what do you mean you don't remember? And she was like, do you want me to remind you? And Aaron's just like, girl, like, and so then she, and so then Bryn brings up and you let Cy get into this and you didn't defend me just like the whole Jeff Lewis thing. With me, I feel like Bryn keeps moving the goalposts because on the first episode you were saying that Aaron called you a call girl or said that you had, were a sugar baby. Now it's you didn't defend me in front of Jeff Lewis. My whole thing about Bryn is like the quickest way to like stop these rumors or like put people in their tracks about what they say about you is just to be honest and tell the people what you do for a living. You have a confessional, use it. You have a way bigger platform or a platform that might be on the same level as Jess Lewis's podcast. Why not just say what you do for a living. But then I also look at Bryn because Bryn starts to get emotional and be like, you know, it's been eight months and people still come at me about it. And I'm just like, well, you don't really do yourself any favors with trying to play this like sex kitten and being overly sexual and overly flirtatious it makes people think that like okay you might get down that way and honestly if someone said that I was getting money because I was a sugar baby it wouldn't bother me like it wouldn't because I'd be like okay I get money this, this how I get money okay how do you get yours but if that's not how you get your money, why not just be honest and be like, I do this, or this is what I'm currently doing now, or I'm unemployed or something like that. But crying about it and saying how disgusted you were by the behavior is really rich coming from you when a lot of people are put off by your behavior. So then... Aaron starts to cry where she's like you know it hurts me that I like that you're hurting and I'm I'm sorry that I did not stick up for you or I didn't say anything like I am totally sorry but she was like right now I'm just dealing with a lot my mom has cancer and Bryn for Bryn to say that her and Aaron are like sisters and their relationship is just like it's toxic it's like the moment that Aaron started crying you didn't even kind of like and I don't know if Aaron was crying because I ain't see no tears but the moment she starts to show this type of emotion where she was like like, Bryn didn't try to console Aaron. She just looked at her. And so they were able to, like, I guess, mend fences in a sense where they both got everything out. And Bryn says, you know, in a weird way, I feel like me and Aaron have gotten closer. They were able to laugh and move forward. We then get this scene of Jenna her friend Heather and her son and her assistant going rock climbing we find out that Jenna has like a fear of heights but her son is really good at rock climbing so we see him he goes up the wall like with no issue like with ease Jenna gets like halfway up the wall freaks out and then they tell her like you know you don't want a cheese grate which means like you know like scratch yourself up against the um, rock climbing wall so you're supposed to push off and then use your feet to like brace yourself as you come down she just jumps off and then ends up kind of hitting the wall and I'm like they told you not to do that ma'am but we also find out that Jenna's son is preparing to go to college and he only has one more year with her and then he's graduating and I guess she wants him to go to like far as far away as he can because that's what she did she was like I left California came to New York but I rarely went home so she's kind of worried that her son won't come home but I think he will I think based off of the relationship that Jenna had with her mom it made sense why she didn't want to go home especially finding out that her mom was a very late late in life diagnosis of odd Autism. It makes sense why it was hard for, you know, her to take care of her children. Not saying if you have autism, you're incapable of taking care of your kids. But I would think back in the day where there isn't any diagnosis or where you do get a diagnosis, people treat you like subhuman. And I'm not saying people don't do that still now, but there have been progressions made that um, I would get why Jenna wouldn't want to go home with her mom. Whereas it does seem like her and her son have an actually like nice relationship. We see that 
that Jenna has finally got a brand new car instead of that um, hoopty. Shouts out to <laughs> to Jessel. Uh, the vintage car that she had that kept breaking down. Um, Jenna even throws shade at Aaron where she was like, well, you know, Aaron would say that, you know, I need a new car because the other one keeps breaking down. So we see her assistant pull up with the brand new car. It's a Bentley. It's a 2024 Bentley. It's called a Bentley Flying Spur. And it was $217,625. So a nice car. I like the color. It's like brown. It kind of gives me, it's not chrome, but like a chrome brown, I guess. It's a nice car. So we leave that scene and then we get to the scene of Aaron and Abe. So before I talk about Abe and Aaron having their sit down, let's go back to Aaron and Bryn having their sit down because I'm realizing I didn't mention this, but Bryn basically explains why she said that Aaron called Jenna poor was because Bryn was ashamed and embarrassed that she accepted Aaron's apology so quickly when it came to the Jeff Lewis situation. So she ran into Jenna. Jenna asked her like, hey, have you talked to Aaron? Had, like, are y'all good? And Aaron, no, Bryn said, yeah, me and Aaron are fine. And then Jenna was like, oh, you accepted her apology that quick? wow because Jenna was still mad at Aaron for the whole like poor conversation like saying like she's poor and so the interesting thing about that is Aaron is like I did not call her poor Aaron keeps holding to the fact she was like I did not call her poor she said what I remember is last year Jenna shared with us that sh there was points in her career that she had dry spells like she didn't have any money really coming in she was at a stalemate and maybe when I was telling the story that was at the forefront of Bryn's mind and maybe Jessel's mind that like I ought they automatically assume I was saying that Jenna had was having money troubles but I never called her poor when we were having that conversation so Bryn was basically like she called she she ended up feeling ashamed that she um accepted Aaron's apology so quickly so that's when she brought up like yeah Aaron needs to like stop talking about people's finances saying that you're poor and I'm out here with sugar daddies or being like a call girl or something like that and I was like that was really why you said that and that just, that was like, yeah, bring your petty. <laughs> you're, like, no one would ever make me feel bad for accepting an apology unless you, like, doubled back on it. Like, you apologized, and then you did the same thing that you apologized to me for. But, like, someone looking at me being like, well, you accepted her apology too quickly. Well, it's my apology. I can accept it if I want to. But the fact that Bryn kind of caved that quickly because Jenna made her feel some type of way, I was like, girl... But you be out here threatening people, calling yourself carbon monoxide, and I'm going to put you in a funeral home. Because Aaron even brings up, when they're having that conversation, what Bryn said about I'm carbon monoxide. And Bryn actually looks surprised that Aaron brought that up. And I'm like, well, girl, if you're bringing up what Sai said about Povid in the... Um, in the group chat, why wouldn't you think if you send this to a group chat that everybody wasn't going to read it? Because Brim was like, yeah, I don't yell. I don't argue. I don't get. And Aaron was like, I didn't yell at you. And then Aaron hit her back was like, yeah, you don't yell and you don't argue in public. But sis, you definitely call yourself carbon monoxide. <laughs> so it's not making sense, Brim. So let's move on. And get back to where we are in the story. So basically, Aaron and Abe sit down. And we finally understand why Aaron is upset with Abe. We find out that they had a really large um, Bitcoin account. And Abe pretty much depleted it, paying off bills that Aaron didn't know about. As well as Aaron was pissed because she was waiting for her Bitcoin to get to a certain level. So then she could pay off a certain part of their mortgage. And she was like, that, that pissed me off because it came, it was like things compounded on the stuff it's like I'm dealing with being a mom you needing me my kids needing me then on top of that my mom has cancer and now I'm trying to deal with this financial situation it was too much and she was like she really needed Abe to like to lean on Abe but like I can't lean on you because I'm pissed at you right now because you took that money that was our money and we were supposed to have conversations about it 
A pretty much cops to it where he was like, I didn't want to tell her. He gets his own confessional and he's like, I didn't want to tell her because I knew it was too much stress on her. But he said, ultimately, I should have told her because it just made things worse. It's given very much Abe don't know how to manage money. And low key, that is where it causes marriages to break up more than infidelity. It is money problems. And if you can't be honest about the financial situation that your family is in, like that says a lot about you and the situation. So Aaron was like, I thought we were in a good place. And so they flash back to when she was having a sit down with Uba and Rebecca about, um, having like a uh what's it called a purse line but it didn't really go anywhere and I guess she went into debt trying to create that business but yeah Abe also lets us know that he is a little insecure with trying to keep up with the lifestyle that he's trying to provide for Aaron because Aaron came from that lifestyle and Abe did not Aaron says you know before I got with you you know I was on jets I was partying I was doing all of this stuff people was flying me out I didn't even have to give them sex and I said okay girl okay city girl and so so Aaron kind of smirks, kind of jabbing at Abe about it, kind of making it seem that she's basically saying that like, yo, I settled for you. So you need to figure this out. But I'm also looking at Aaron, like if you didn't want to get married, cause she does make the comment being like, I didn't want to get married. Then why did you get married when you met Abe? Because this energy that you're giving about like, I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to do all of this stuff. Last season, you were acting like this was like your knight in shining armor and like your best friend, your, your, you know, your confidant. And now y'all having problems. See, I knew that was going to happen because I was like, most of the times when the girls get on reality TV talking about how great and how wonderful their marriage is, the next season, everything falling apart. And that's basically what's happening with Abe and Aaron because it seems like they don't have the best communication as well as when they got married, they really didn't even know each other. I think they only dated for like six or seven months and then then got married and they both kind of said like we're 13 years in and this year it seems like we're finally getting to know each other and I said we're getting to know each other that probably might lead you two to not be together no more if you ask me <laughs> so the next scene we have is of Uba and Sai so we find out that the girls are going to the Hamptons and so Uba and Sai are at this cute little boutique trying to find outfits and so Sai is asking Uba how's her relationship how's everything going and things seem to be going great for Uba and this new man she talks about how he did not take a job in another state because he wanted to stay with her she's also having like water damage issues and Sai is like where like where, where, how are you getting water like what's going on because I guess they got to turn they do have to turn off the water to like fix wherever like is damaged and she was like, I've been going to such and such hotel or going with my boyfriend in Connecticut. And so <laughs> I said, girl. And so Uba's just like, you could tell she's kind of surprised that she met this guy at this point in her life. Cause maybe she was just like, you know, I'm probably never going to meet anybody and that's okay. I'm kind of where she is when it comes to dating, because it's not like I'm not like out there trying, like I've been on hinge, I've been on Bumble and like the conversation goes either one or two ways. Either the guy gives me the ick because they get too sexual too soon or we'll be having great conversation and like be talking for at least like a week or maybe almost two weeks and then they 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 ghost me so I'm just kind of like it is what it is at this point so while they're talking Sai ends up asking Uba like hey you kind of been acting a little different especially in the group like what's up and Uba is just like I don't like the chaos and like the the fighting in the group and so um Sai brings up her situation with Bryn she was like Bryn is the one that like bring like brought up the whole thing with Aaron saying that Aaron said Jenna was poor and then my situation about like saying that I hate her when I said I can't stand her and Uba basically says and she chimes in after what Sai says basically saying I she believes that Bryn is a very smart manipulator an intelligent manipulator saying that Bryn will take your words and she will like consort them and then she'll throw them back in your face and Uba brings up how she's kind of always looked at Bryn differently since last year and she's like every time I see Bryn doing the same thing where she uses someone's words against them or she manipulates the words I take 10 steps back mind you who told Uba this was a good looking wig who told her this when I tell you I was like she looks like Patrice Woodbine from P-Valley Mercedes 
Mercedes mom. When I, I had to Google, I was like, I Googled, I said, Mercedes mom from P-Valley. And when Patrice Woodbine popped up in the same wig, I screamed because that is who she looked like. <laughs> I don't know who told Uba this was a good choice. So Uba just was like, she has always kind of looked at Bryn funny because she felt like Bryn was supposed to be loyal to Sai. And even though Sai was supposed to be loyal to her, I think Uba felt like Bryn and Sai were like the closest out of the group. So if she could do that to Sai, Uba was like, what will she basically do to me? So she's kind of always been like, yeah, I don't, I don't see it for her. I don't. So Sai ends up saying that she believes anytime anybody in the group is getting close and Bryn is not a part of it, that Bryn tries to drive a wedge between the group or, or the two parties that are getting together. And I kind of believe that, but I would need to see more evidence of it. Like I can give Sai a little bit when she, with this, like a little credence to this, only because I did think it was kind of out of place for Bryn to bring up Jessel when Sai and her were arguing. It felt like deflection. Like girl, me and you are arguing. Why you need to bring Jessel up into this? And you know me and Jessel are cool now, so shut up. Uh, when it comes to Aaron and Jenna, maybe... But it seems like that wasn't Bryn's, like, motive. She just wanted to seem cool in front of Jenna. So that's why she said what she said. But I need to see more to see if Sai's assessment is truly, uh, like, right. So the last scene we see is of... Bryn, Jessel, and Rebecca going to um, take a helicopter to the Hamptons. Bryn is not funny. I feel like she thinks she's funny, but she's not. She changes the board that like that's at the um, airport for the helicopter to put like let's blade skanks. And I was like, it's not funny, but she thinks it like I don't get Bryn's humor. Or maybe, Br you know what, Bryn's humor is very much like high school, like boy humor. Maybe a little, well, maybe like middle school kind of humor where she's always making like sexual like innuendo jokes and then like she thinks they're funny, but they're not. It's just kind of like, it, it's not giving what you think it's giving. So, Because even the flight attendant looked annoyed when she changed the board for her. So... We find out that Sai was supposed to come with them. But Sai, we, when you see her scene with Uba, Uba was like, hey, I'm going to drive. I'm not going to take the helicopter. I got, like, meetings and things, and I want to make phone calls and all of that stuff on my way to the Hamptons. And so Sai was like, oh, I'll ride with you, you know. And Uba's like, are you sure you don't want to get in the helicopter? And Sai's like, girl, I got kids. I don't get on no helicopter when you got kids, which I know a lot of people who say make statements like that. I've only been on uh, one helicopter, and that was, like, a fair ride. Like, you could pay your tickets, and then they would fly you around the fair. It was, like, a huge... I think it was like was it in Virginia yeah it was like the Virginia fair like one of the Virginia fairs so um so Brim is like size not coming because of me then she makes a comment being like well you know it's because like our situation and then Rebecca is like Sai told me you and her were friends and like really close like you don't think y'all can work it out and Brim's like no because she's always yelling at me in public she's always saying this to me and like you know this is Manhattan this is New York this is not Rikers Island and I feel like Sai thinks she eats not Sai Brim thinks she eats with these lines but they don't eat I said, okay, Bryn, not Rikers Island. And so they were like, Jessel and um, Rebecca was like, well, you should try to give her a chance. And then Bryn is like, well, I'm a party girl. I don't want to hold on to these issues, these feelings. So then they were like waiting on Jenna to get there. But you know, Jenna got a new car. So Jenna's like, girl, I forgot to tell y'all I wasn't taking no helicopter. I want to drive. I want to drive so I think Jessel was like are you in a Bentley and she was like yeah girl I am so I'm gonna drive so we see them get into the helicopter Jessel trips <laughs> and while they're in the helicopter Bryn asks Rebecca so what should we say when people ask us about the Scientology thing so Rebecca responds by saying tell them no comment Jessel makes a face like girl what and so I, I think that's when Rebecca explains that like she knew this was coming because when it got out that she was on filming because I think Bryn said well you know once people find out that you're on this show they're going to 
like start to like you know ask us questions in the press about it and stuff like that so then Rebecca says in her confessional like you know once it got out that I was going to be a part of this show all of a sudden I got all of these um like calls about hey do you want to make a comment here hey do you want to make a comment there and so Jessel says just to play devil's advocate it's going to be a topic of conversation because Scientology is a hot topic of conversation so then Rebecca is like well Scientology is a religion and it's a worldwide recognized religion which I was like it's not worldwide rec like recognize worldwide because there are several countries that don't recognize Scientology I think it's like Germany France Mexico and like several others and you know Bryn wasn't really like thrilled by uh Rebecca's response she kind of felt like she was talking to a snake oil salesman she was like it feels like I'm speaking to Chad GPT but I was like girl what did you expect because then Rebecca says in her confessional why not us actually have a conversation like when we're not on a helicopter where we can't hear each other and when you really want to hear my response instead of doing it this way you know Jenna says you know every religion has an extreme and so like if you only look at the extreme then you kind of like discredit the good parts of it and the production was like well are you going to look more into Scientology she made a face like girl hell no nah. then Jessel was like well at least they got the best looking celebrities and then Uba was just like girl I don't really know like you know I'm not it's not my religion I'm a Muslim <laughs> so, <laughs> and then Aaron says something about what did Aaron said something about she was about to bring up something about John Travolta but then she was like I can't say that on camera I can't say that on camera and so that's where it ended with Bryn pretty much saying that like the responses she got from Rebecca felt like she was talking to chat GPT so yeah y'all that is it that is all and as always remember to be bravely authentic drop down in them comments below and share your thoughts as well as like the video and subscribe if you like what you heard and i'm out y'all deuces